How are you going to use the spirit of prophecy to try to disprove it when evangelism page 616 clearly says the Holy Spirit is a person with a personality? So I'm like, you can't get away from that because the anti-Trinitarian movement, they're not simply against the name, they're against the concept. And they believe that the Holy Spirit is not a person or a being, but more so a force or an energy that exudes from Christ of the Father. But if they're using Ellen White, I just ask them, then what are you gonna do with Evangelism 616? Also consider what the pioneers did say versus what they didn't. If you look back at Froome, you can look at James White, you can look at several of our pioneers. They did speak against the Trinity, but it wasn't the concept of simply the word, a group of three. There was a principle of the Trinity. Um, Mrs. White, when she wrote her books or whenever she wrote a letter, they were not right away published. They would go through a process where they would verify that there were the commas and the periods and the question marks were in the proper place before being published. I would like to read a quote of hers in regards to this process. Regarding the testimonies, nothing is ignored. Nothing is cast aside, but time and place must be considered. Nothing must be done untimely. Some matters must be withheld because some persons would make an improper use of the light given. Every jot and tittle is essential and must appear at an opportune time. In the past, the testimonies were carefully prepared before they were sent out for publication, and all matter is still carefully studied after the first writing. We see that the writings then were carefully checked before being sent for publication. She did say something about compilations. She was uh, requested and asked if it was fine for them to make a book uh, in regards to one subject and gather all her writings and put it all in this book. But she wrote the following. I can see plainly that should everyone who thinks he is qualified to write books follow his imagination and have his productions published insisting that they be recommended by our publishing houses, there would be plenty of tears sown broadcast in our world. Many from among our own people are writing to me asking me with earnest determination the privilege of using my writings to give force to certain subjects which they wish to present to the people in such a way as to leave a deep impression upon them. It is true that there is a reason why some of these matters should be presented, but I would not venture to give my approval in using the testimonies in this way, or to sanction the placing of matter which is good in itself in the way which they propose. The persons who make these propositions for aught I know, may be able to conduct the enterprises of which they write in a wise manner. But nevertheless, I dare not give the least license for using my writings in the manner which they propose. In taking account of such an enterprise, there are many things that must come into consideration. For in using the testimonies to bolster up some subject which may impress the mind of the author, the extracts may give a different impression than that which they would were they read in their original connection. There is actually one book that comes to my mind. One of those books is Evangelism. Many believe that Mrs. White actually wrote this book, but in fact she did not write this book. Uh, this book, Evangelism, has very sub many subtitles, and one of the subtitles that uh, many Trinitarians like to bring up is this subtitle we find here in Evangelism, The Eternal Dignitaries of the Trinity. 
Many people who get this book, they think Mrs. White wrote it, like I said. And when they read this subtitle, they see, there you go, Mrs. White believing the Trinity. Look at the subtitle. But this book was actually published for the very first time in 1946. And we know Mrs. White, she passed away in 1915. So this was done uh, without her approval because she said not to do this, but they did it anyways. And one of the persons who did this was uh, Leroy Froome. He took part of this uh, book. Um, he actually wrote this uh, from his book, Movement of Destiny. Later, when I connected with the Ministerial Association of the General Conference, I did considerable research in the spirit of prophecy, writings on this subject, and found much more. When we were asked to help in compiling the book Evangelism, these and many other councils became a vital part of that book. So yes, they were asking for a book that could push the Trinity. And what did he do? He did that what Mrs. White said not to do, to get her writings, get them out of their original context and put them all in one book. And they did it anyways, they did it. Well, Leroy Froome was not a person that many uh, considered as uh, trustworthy. In fact, Leroy Froome wrote a letter to Reuben Figer in 1955, December the 14th, and he wrote the following. I was publicly denounced in the chapel at the Washington Missionary College by Dr. B.G. Wilkinson as the most dangerous man in this denomination. Mrs. White did actually have a vision in regards to how her writings would be handled. And I would like to read this. This is a very extraordinary vision that she had. In this vision, she was gonna open the door, but before opening, she looked out the window and she recognized the people, which they were from the church. But again, before opening the door, she looked again, and this time it was a different scene. And I would like to read that, what she saw. I knew them well and turned to open the parlor door to receive them, but thought I would look again. The scene was changed. The company now presented the appearance of a Catholic procession. One bore in his hand a cross, another a reed, and as they approached, the one carrying a reed made a circle around the house, saying three times, This house is prescribed. The goods must be confiscated. They have spoken against our holy order. Terror seized me, and I ran through the house out of the north door, and found myself in the midst of a company, some of whom I knew, but I dared not speak a word to them for fear of being betrayed. I tried to speak a retired spot where I might weep and pray without meeting eager, inquisitive eyes wherever I turned. I repeated frequently, if I could only understand this, if they would tell me what I have said or what I have done. So this vision, we see that, in fact, they did grab her writings, they took possession of them, and they were angered of what she wrote, and she was questioning, what did I say? What did I, what did I say that? No, they, it was offended to them. What have I done? Now, it is not all surprising that we have seen changes and manipulations in her writings. Sometimes people say things of her writings in which she did not actually write. Uh, this actually happened to her. And I would like to read a quote. My words are so rested and misinterpreted that I am coming to the conclusion that the Lord desires me to keep out of large assemblies and refuse private interviews. What I say is reported in such a perverted light that it is new and strange to me. It is mixed with words spoken by men to sustain their own theories. In fact, I had a person come to me because I was talking to him about the book Thoughts and Daniels in Revelation that we should study it because she counsels for those who want to be a good students or good presenters of prophecy to read this book. And this gentleman told me, did you know that Sister White actually wrote against that book? 
that she said that there were errors in that book. And I told her, well, I would like to see those writings. I would like to see and read it for myself. And for till this moment, I have not read it. He has not shared it with me. And I cannot take his words and distribute what he said to other people and say like, hey, Mrs. White said this. I can't do that. And I think many of us should be careful and before spreading uh, false things, we should verify that in fact, Mrs. White did write this or she said this. There is another quote I like to read and she wrote the following. Many study the scriptures for the purpose of proving their own ideas to be correct. They change the meaning of God's word to suit their own opinions. And thus they do also with the testimonies that he sends. They quote half a sentence, leaving out the other half, which if quoted would show their reasoning to be false. God has a controversy with those who rest the scriptures, making them confirm to their preconceived ideas. And people do this today. For example, people like to get the quote from uh, the Desire of Ages, the third person of the Godhead. And they read a certain portion and then they say, see, here Mrs. White is speaking about the Trinity. But when you read the full text, you find that she was not in favor of the Trinity. In fact, she did check everything that she wrote before it was published. She says the following, I read over all that is copied to see that everything is as it should be. I read all the book manuscript before it is sent to the printer. So you can see that my time must be fully occupied. Besides writing, I am called upon to speak to the different churches and to attend important meetings. I could not do this work unless the Lord helped me. There is a quote in that is found in manuscript release number seven. This is a sermon that she preached on October the 20th of 1906 and a stenographer copied it down. In this book, which was released, this, this quote itself released in 1976, we find that there are three beings speaking of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Here is where the work of the Holy Ghost comes in. After your baptism, you are baptized in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. You are raised up out of the water to live henceforth in newness of life, to live a new life. You are born unto God, and you stand under the sanction and the power of the three holiest beings in heaven. Now, this same sermon that she gave, that was published in manuscript release, 1976, Years after her death, she in fact published it in the Review and Herald on December the 13th, 1906. And you could read it, you could read it for yourself, and you will see that the three holiest beings is not found in this uh, publication in the Review and Herald. And we should read how Mrs. White actually explains or she writes in regards to Matthew 28, 19. Because see, many read the scriptures and take Matthew 28, 19 and say, this is proof of the Trinity. But I like to read what she wrote in regards to baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Christ gave his followers a positive promise that after his ascension, he would send them his spirit. Go ye therefore, he said, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father. Now look at this a personal God, and of the Son, a personal Prince and Savior, and of the Holy Ghost sent from heaven to represent Christ. Here she does not use the phrase a personal like she does to the Father, in, or she did not accept or teach that there was a Trinity. If she would have, I mean, this is the same year, if I'm not mistaken, the Desire of Ages was published. She used the word third person, but here in that same year that Desire of Ages was published, she does not even use the word a personal or a personal being 
like she does to the father and the son. She actually wrote this in regards to the spirit, what it was. The divine spirit that the world's redeemer promised to send is the presence and power of God. Now, there is a quote that Mrs. White wrote in Review and Herald, January the 4th, 1881. In there, she uh, uses the lyrics of the, that famous doxology, uh, praise him from whom all blessings flow. Now, this same hymn, which many believe and say, see, Mrs. White is using this and she's praising the Trinity. This same hymn, James White wrote it in the first hymnal book in 1849. Now, we all know that James White was not a Trinitarian, but he loved his doxology. And many other uh, pioneers, they loved his doxology. And they were not Trinitarians. And they published it in, his, in very other, uh, various other hymnal books. So, I hope we understand and see that we must be very careful to reading uh, Mrs. White's books that are today uh, known as compilations. We should read those writings, those texts in its original context. Um, we need to be very careful. And I would like to end this with the following quote. There will be those once united with us in the faith who will search for new strange doctrines, for something odd and sensational to present to the people. They will bring in all conceivable fallacies and will present them as coming from Mrs. White, that they may be quiet souls. So let us be careful in, in reading these compilations. We can see that they rejected her counsel of not doing this, of writing or putting together uh, her quotes into one subject, because she said there was a danger they could make these writings, these quotes, out of its context to pre be presented as a with a different meaning. I hope this has helped out and may we ask for God uh, in prayer for guidance. And now to all who have a desire for truth, I would say, do not give credence to unauthenticated reports as to what Sister White has done or said or written. If you desire to know what the Lord has revealed through her, read her published works. Are there any points of interest concerning what she has not written? Do not eagerly catch up and report rumors as to what she has said.